Audrey, you're not going into stock and dress like that. I was going right in this morning. Nick asked us all to meet him at the station. What could be so And important? we're all going to be there. Now go up and change your clothes and poke your head in Jared's door. I have a feeling he went back to sleep. Good morning. It's supposed to be my vacation. Well, I'm sure meeting Nick isn't going to ruin it completely. Oh, good morning, Good morning, Silas. Jean. Good morning, Mr. Barker. Good morning, Silas. Have you seen Heath? Yes, ma'am. He had something to do down at the corral. He said he'd be right back. Thank you. Good morning, Silas. Good morning. Gene. Good morning, good morning Mother. Darling. How are you feeling? I'll tell you as soon as I'm awake. I just wish Brother Nick could pick a more convenient hour for his homecomings. I'm not quite up to whatever good news he's bringing us this time. Good news? Now, you know perfectly well he's never come back from one of these trips yet without bringing home some earth-shaking discovery. Gene, what was it last time? Uh, some kind of machine that's supposed to sew faster than by hand. Hmm. Mm, that was it. Well, I'll tell you, when Nick gets here, if he has any more of those wild ideas, we'll just ship him right back to San Francisco. Hello? Where's everybody? Why, that's Nick. I thought we were supposed to meet him at the station. Well, that's Nick for you. Mother! Nick, we were going to meet you at the station. I couldn't wait. I took an earlier train. Mother, this is Hester Converse. How do you do? How nice to meet you, Mrs. Barclay. And the gentleman on uh, her right. I know, Jared. And Eugene. How do you do? Nick! And you must be Audra. Well, where's Heath? He'll be here soon. You're all just the way Nick described you. That trip from San Francisco seemed like a thousand miles. Now that I'm here, I can't really imagine what I was so nervous about. Hester and I were going to save this until you, uh, well, you had a chance to meet her and really know her, and she had a chance to know you. But I, I think we better tell him right now. We're going to be married. <laughs> well, well, what do you know? Congratulations, Nick. Thank you, Jerry. Oh, gosh, Audrey, it's really uh, nice uh, to... Uh, age before beauty, my boy. Well, the mother, aren't you going to congratulate me? Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, of course. Uh, now. Oh, thank you. And now, to a most charming, gracious, and completely captivating addition to our family. Sorry I'm late. Nick, you weren't due until... We were just toasting my prospective bride, Miss Hester Converse, my brother Heath. What'd you do, knock her unconscious and drag her here? <laughs> Welcome to the Barclay family, Hester. Thank you, Heath. Oh, what you waiting on? Why don't you go ahead and kiss her? Might be your last chance, you know. I'll get you some champagne. I'm just off the range. <laughs> Nonsense, it's Barclay dirt. Tell me, has Nick mastered this step yet? Not yet, but I intend to work on it. <laughs> <laughs> thank Jared. you, thank you, thank you. Who's next? Uh, how about Heath? Yes, Heath. Come on, it's the rage of the East. Sorry, I'm not much for dancing, man. Please, Heath, just for me. Come on, let me talk you into it. Why don't you try Eugene? He's good at it. think of her. She's lovely. But. But? I've only known her a week. Oh, less than that. You were only gone five days. Five wonderful days. Five of the most important days I've ever spent. I love her mother. From the first minute I met her. Where was that? Oh, in a cheap saloon down by the waterfront. She was wearing a red oh. dress. What there oh, was up. Oh, no, no. <laughs> No, I met her at Dave Wallace's party. Well, no, 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 that's not exactly true either. I saw her at the party. She was surrounded by men, three deep. I couldn't even get close enough to ask her for a dance. Anyway, Dave told me she had an appointment the following morning at his office. Well, I uh, made an arrangement to be there, too. Finally, Dave came out. He said something about being glad that we finally met. And I said, not half as glad as I am, Dave. Now, if you will properly introduce me to this young lady, I would like to ask her to be my wife. <laughs> At which point, Dave laughed, and we all laughed. 
But Hester and I both knew that I wasn't joking. You do love her, don't you? She's made me happy. I can see that. Eugene, I've seen bears that dance better. Oh, <laughs> wait till we get to San Francisco, Nick Barkley, and I start teaching you how to dance. Uh, You're going back to San Francisco? Oh, Hester's got about nine million things to do before the wedding, and, well, anything that's to be done around here, Heath can... Oh, I tripped to Indian Springs. I forgot about that. I'm sorry, Mother. Well, it's just that with Jared tied up at the trial, the, uh, the trip wouldn't be very much fun without you. Both of you, of course. Hester, hmm. how would you like to spend two weeks in the most beautiful mountains that God ever created? With a mountain stream where the trout run... Nick? That big. And the air, so fresh and so clean, you could bottle it and sell it. A huh? camping trip? Camping and fishing and dancing. Ah, let's not forget the dancing. We've got a logging camp up there, and those Friday night dances, Hester, you haven't lived until you've been to a Friday night dance. Of course, we don't do the same steps that you were demonstrating, but... Uh... Well, actually, I'd love it. It's just that right now I have so much shopping to do for the wedding. I'd plan on going to San Francisco, and then... Well, Nick, I just don't see how I can... All right, we'll go. Oh, no, no, now you've got things to do. Nick, today. I want to go. what you're doing. Don't let me disturb you. Uh, you're up early. Oh, I was so excited I couldn't sleep. Now that I decided to make this trip, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, I uh, hope you won't be disappointed. I'm sure I won't be. Nick said that I was going to be riding a horse named Jingo. Uh, he suggested that I come down and get acquainted with him before we start. And the uh, sorrow in the install. He's beautiful and I hope gentle. Gentle as summer rain, from some of our best bloodlines. Breeding, beauty, and strength, all the virtues a woman could ask for in a horse. And in a man, for that matter. What are the virtues you look for, Heath? In a horse, I mean. Well, those you mentioned sound pretty good. Except if it were my own horse, I'd add spirit. I would, too. So it seems we think alike. Were you surprised when you heard that Nick and I were going to be married? I was. And did it please you? Well, I've always found Nick to be a pretty good judge of people. Well, that's an indirect way of telling me how Nick feels, and I already know that. So you haven't answered my question, which is how you feel about me. Forgive me, Heath, I was just teasing you because, well, you seem so serious all the time. Well, you don't have to answer me now. At least not until you have a chance to get to know me a little better. Anyone here interested in breakfast? Well, I'm for that. Me too. I'm famished. You coming, Jerry? No, no, Heath. I've already had mine, but I'll be up to say goodbye. Hester, you got a minute? Oh, what is it, Jared? Well, you know, I've just realized that we've met before. Oh? Yeah, it was up in San Francisco, uh, oh, I don't know, six, eight months ago, on one of those big fancy occasions. <laughs> well, let's see, could it have been the governor's ball, maybe? No, no, I don't think so. Or the reception for Madame Mojeska? No. No, I think it was one of those charity affairs for a hospital. Jim. Well, I'm, I'm not surprised you don't remember me. I was only one of your many admirers that danced with you that night. Well, that's no excuse for my not remembering you, Jared. I apologize. You're forgiven. You know, Hester, I kind of get the feeling that this camping trip isn't really your idea of fun. Oh, is that a feeling or a conclusion? 
Well, now, I don't know you well enough to draw conclusions, do I? Well, I'll draw a few anyway. If you're wrong, I'll object. All right. You know, Hester, Stockton isn't exactly San Francisco. It doesn't have the same excitement or glamour. I'm afraid you won't get the same kind of attention you're used to. I was just wondering if you'd be able to live without all that here in this valley. Well, I'm marrying Nick, not the valley. Well, the adjustments to living on a ranch will take a little time, but... I'm not talking so much about the ranch. To be perfectly honest, I was just wondering if you'll be able to give up the game of... well, suitors, if you will. And on what do you base your doubt? I don't know. Maybe nothing. Good, because you're wrong, Jared. Well, then in that case, the prosecution rests. Thank you. Come on, I'll walk you back to the house. up all right? Oh, I'm, I'm fine. Well, we'll camp somewhere pretty soon. Oh, please, sir, not on my account. From now on, lady, everything I do is on your account. Ow! <laughs> on the other side of that river. Look, I'll help you across. It's kind of rocky, huh? Well, tell it to Old Faithful here. Watch it. We're coming through. Pastor, don't hit her. now. There we go. Thank you, Heath. Thanks, Heath.
Good morning. Good morning. If you're looking for Nick, he's down by the street. Oh, Don. I wanted to get up first, cook breakfast, and show him what a really wonderful wife I'm going to make him. See you later. Five hungry people back there just counting on me. Let them starve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, you won your point. Now, woman, you go away and let me. Get May the... I try it, please? Want fish? <laughs> well, you know, one of these days I'm going to learn to say no to you. All right, come on. Let me get rid of this beauty first. your balance now. All right, now hold in the left hand. That's it. Now take the line, hold this on your right. That's right. Now, bring it back real slowly and just lay it right out there. You see? It's all in the wrist. I've been told my wrists are magnificent. <laughs> all right. Let's try it. Here we go. All right. Hold the string. Oh, watch it. No! Oh, hold it! <laughs> come on, come on. Oh. Come on. Oh. There we go. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, yes, that's when I, I met Franz. He was a Viennese, a uh, pianist. What was he like? Oh, let me think. He was very short, dark, very intense, and very Viennese. Yes. <laughs> oh. You know, it's funny. You're not that much older than I, and yet it's as though I haven't lived at all. It would take me about ten seconds to list the men in my life. Oh, you've got time. Oh, time, yes, but... But I'm beginning to wonder. Is the valley the place? Oh, not that my social life is completely barren. Tomorrow night we'll be up at the lumber camp. You haven't lived until you've been to a dance at our lumber camp. <laughs> I'd rather dance than... Well, you were saying you'd rather dance than... <laughs> than clean trout. <laughs> <laughs> Well, outside of cleaning trout, what have you two been up to? I'm sure they could hear you giggling clear back in Sacramento. We took a short married journey through my past, Mrs. Barclay. I'll get breakfast started. How do you like it up here? Oh, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Thirty years ago, Tom and I crossed those mountains for the very first time. And it's a different world now, but here and now, it seems like yesterday. Some things never change, do they? After that first time, Tom and I decided that we'd make the same trip every year. And the year I was carrying Nick, well, it had been a bad time for us. Tom suffered business losses. I had been ill, and Jared, well, Jared was only four years old, and he'd had pneumonia, and we almost lost him. Anyhow, one morning, Tom and I woke up, and it was as if we had read each other's mind. And he turned to me, and he said, Victoria, and I said, I know, I know. We're going to make that same trip again. 
And it was right for us. You know, on this trip, I kind of feel that you've been testing me. Do you mind? No, I... I don't think so. No, I don't mind. I think, in a way, I'm glad. Maybe I needed to test myself. <laughs> but I don't, uh, imagine I'm going to pass with flying colors. But you'll survive. Yes, Mrs. Barclay. I know what I must look like to you. A fish out of water. But if you, if you'll help me... I'm going to teach you to make the best Western breakfast in the whole world. She said she'd be just a minute. An hour ago. There'll be enough of that. I'll check. <laughs> I guess I should have brought along a full-length mirror. It's lovely. Well, it's about... Well, now, on second thought, it was worth it. Yeah. Better be going, huh? My, don't we all look handsome tonight? Well, we uh, better get along, huh? Well, I hope it isn't far. No, no, it shouldn't take you long. If I went to all this trouble and get there looking like the wreck of the headpiece, I'll hang Don't tell me. I ain't much for dancing, ma'am. Not half bad. You'd be the rage of San Francisco if you'd only learn to hold your partner a little more securely. Worry, I won't break.
Thanks for the dates. Now you both had your turns. Begin to think I'd have to marry you before I got a chance to dance with you. I'm so tired. Could you please take me back to the camp? Oh, Nick, I love you so much. Nick, mm -hmm. can we be married? I don't see anyone try to stop me. I mean, right away, now, tonight. We can leave a note for the family. If I never saw I another one... I you were enjoying this. Well, I was. I mean, I am. But your family's wonderful. They really are. But I want to be with you alone. I want to be married to you. I want that, too. You know that. Trip will be over in a week. Uh, maybe less. I can arrange it. Just as soon as we get back, we'll be married. The very day we get back, all right? So warm, I, I couldn't sleep. Esther, you were crying. No, I'm all right now. Esther, what is it? Oh, he. he, he. You don't understand. Stop it! Yeah, but you're all wrong. It's not like you think. Nick!
Eugene. It's all right. I know what it must have looked like. We got to get him to a doctor. Can he travel like this? He's got to be strapped down tight. Let's get him into the tent. You better change your clothes. We can manage. This looks like some kind of torture, but we got to keep him as still as possible. I hope his back isn't broken. Help me saddle the horses, Eugene. Let's go. Believe what you want to believe, Mrs. Barkley. Now, may I sit with my fiance? Alone, please. I don't know what he'll be believing when he comes to, but please give me some time with him. At least not for sure. Well, you were out there with her. Let him tell her, Dora. I was coming back from the dance. I heard her crying. I thought maybe she wanted to talk. All I did was ask her what was wrong. I tried to comfort her. Did you tell Nick that? No, I didn't have a chance. He came at me well, like... tell him now. No, he's got enough trouble now without worrying about what his future wife was crying about. Mrs. Barkley! Cut me out of here! Nick. Oh. You're only you. making it worse. Don't you ever touch Please me. Be quiet. Don't get me out of this. Oh. Get me out of this. He's delirious. Esther. We better get him to that doctor. Esther. 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 Better find out how deep it is. deep for the litter.
about the place we crossed on the way up? It's eight or ten miles back. All that bouncing around, that's no good. I'll have to get a doctor up here. I'll get the doctor, Heath. You uh, put that thing together. You see that it works. Okay? We'll set up camp here. You hurry back. Let's set up camp now. Looks like we're going to be here a while. How do you feel? Better. Will you loosen these? My arms are starting to get numb. A little more. That's it. Vic, we must talk. Will you get the legs? About last night. You know, he just heard me crying. He, he... A little more. He just heard me crying. Nick, you mustn't. <laughs> Gotta get out of here. Nick. Before it's too late. We can't. We've got to. No. Well, you wanted to get married, all right? We'll get married just as soon as we get down off this mountain. Get back, you come shouldn't. On, come on. He made me do it, Mrs. Barkley. I had no choice. You always have a choice. He tricked me into untying him. Did he also trick you into leaving with him? in such pain, such, such need. I, I didn't, I couldn't think. Couldn't think beyond your own selfish need to be Mrs. Nick Barkley? You were ready to risk his life for that. No, Mrs. Barkley, I was afraid. I was afraid if we waited, I'd change my mind. Can you talk about her? I don't know. To Nick? Yes. What time is it? It'll be dawn in a few hours. 
How long have I been asleep? A long time. Well, it seems like a bad dream, a nightmare. There's a doctor on the way. He should be here very soon. He's. What's all that about? Nick, I tried to tell you. He, he just heard me crying and... Crying? Why? It's traditional. It's a woman's right to cry before she's married. So you were crying. And he came over to find out what was wrong. I must be a... You name it. That's Jack. This is over, I promise. Uh, I'll make you so happy. Nick, do you want to know the real reason why I was crying? It was for the parties, Nick. The dancing, the champagne, and the fun. He won't be living in a monastery. You know. No, Nick, it won't be the same. The valley's not San Francisco or New York, but parties. Oh, Nick, I love being beautiful. I love beautiful clothes. You'll get over that. Well, Nick, if you could just make me believe that. Please make me believe it. Nick. You'll help me, won't you? Nick, please help me. I'll help you. Hester, you, you've got to be sure. Very sure. You don't want to be tied down. Be sure. I'm sorry I took so long getting up here, Mrs. Barkley, but I was kind of tied up. Triplets, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Doctor, will he be all right? Oh, he'll be fine. Just give him these for pain. I don't think he'll need them now. He's been through the worst of it. But whoever thought up that contraption? I don't think it saved his life, Mrs. Barkley, but it sure saved him a long stretch on his back. A good long stretch. <laughs> I wouldn't move him for four or five days. Then he should be able to make it on his own. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor, would you mind if I rode down with you? It'll be a pleasure to have your company, miss. Nick? Nick, I've come to say something, and I hope... Well, I hope you'll understand. You told me last night to be sure before making up my mind. Well, I stayed awake all night trying to be sure. Trying to be honest with myself like I've never been before. I know now that I wasn't crying because of the parties, the champagne, or the pretty clothes. Esther, I... Please, don't try to say anything. Just listen. The truth about Heath is that I wanted to find a way to make him want me. I needed him to want me, as I've always needed the attention of attractive men. Seems I have to keep reassuring myself. Only I'm never truly reassured. If I'd come here with Heath, then I'd have wanted your attention, and I'd have done anything to get it. It's a, a weakness, a terrible flaw. But at least now I can admit it to myself. I hope someday I'll... I'll be ready to devote myself to one man. And I hope you'll be somebody like you. Hester. I'm going now, Nick. Because I don't want to hurt you more than I already have. I only ask that you try to understand, and maybe someday you'll find it in your heart to forgive me.
doctor said. I know what the doctor said. That's why I said hold it. Thanks, Heath. Well, now, don't everyone start applauding. I've been practicing this little stunt for the past three days with pretty fair success. Well, well, now that he can walk, I'd say there's certain uh, catching up to be done around here, wouldn't you, Heath? By bringing up that herd from Sonora. We didn't tell you nobody's been able to break your new Appaloosa. It's your turn next. Forgotten the party of the second part? In there? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Barclay's in conference. Uh, I'll tell him you're here. Here, you just give him this. Drop that on his desk, and you won't have to say a thing. Go on, I'll take full responsibility. Finally got here. You didn't have any trouble finding the place. No, I didn't have any. Sure, trouble. it didn't inconvenience no, you. No, not a bit. Just passing through, no doubt. I'm here at your invitation, Jared. Brett, you wild and wandering maverick. <laughs> what do you got to say for yourself? Why didn't you let me know you were coming? What? Miss a welcome like this? <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. Well, now that you're here, what are your plans? Just passing through, or do you plan to stay? Well, if I stay, can I make a place for myself? In this valley? Believe me, it's crying for men like you. It's your oyster. <laughs> Unum ad finum. <laughs> I've got some work to take care of. It won't take a minute. I'll meet you over at the hotel. We'll ride out to the house. You'll stay with us, of oh, course. I, I don't. Objections overruled. Good to have you here, Brett. Thank you, Counselor. Right. It's Skyler. Get word to him. Then it was right after that that I painted the zebra stripes on Professor Hamilton's old mare. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I huh? painted the stripes on the mare. You put the liniment in his bathwater. Oh, that's right. <laughs> How did you two ever graduate? Well, I just broke into an office and stole two diplomas. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Now, it wasn't all fun and games. Of course, it might have been for Brett here. He was kind of the brilliant type, just breezed through. I've often wondered why you never went into law. Well, I couldn't see myself clerking for a firm that might make me a junior partner in 20 years. So I traded the little my father left me for experience. Equal parts, vision, luck, a sense of timing. You attract fortune like a magnet. Cautions for the plotters. I leaped over their heads. Cattle, shipping, land. And now, Brett? Now? A breather. 
And then I think law. Ah, right here in this valley. If you can stand the competition, Jared. Competition? I'll send you the business. I'll even set you up an office space. Fair enough? That's more than generous. Brett, I think you'll find this whole valley is more than generous. Just give it a little bit of yourself and it'll never fail you. You'll see for yourself, Brett, in time. I hope so. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to go and unpack before dinner. <laughs> well, I'd say he hasn't changed a bit. The rising star has become a comet. Do comets ever stay put? Well, I don't know. He just might this time. I wasn't sure Silas had put any towels in your room. I'm a very wasteful user of towels. It comes from living in so many hotel rooms. Thank you very much. You're very thoughtful. I recognized you the moment you arrived. There's a photograph of you and Jared in Mother's bedroom. Oh, yes. Don't tell me. In cap and gown, grinning like a couple of chimps. Mm-hmm. I must have changed a lot since then. Well, I don't think you'd paint zebra stripes on anyone's mare again, or or climb an enormous mountain so that you and Jared can have it named after yourselves. Well, I hope you like staying here as much as we love having you. That's right. My name is Monroe. Oh, you, uh, you don't know me. I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes. Some place where we, uh, won't be disturbed. What about? The Secret Service. Well, come in, Mr. Monroe. This way, please. Beautiful home, Mr. Barkley. Thank you. Mr. Barkley, you got a good friend visiting with you, name of Brett Schuyler. Now, don't confirm or deny, just let me do the talking. He was uh, moving around quite a piece before he came here. I know, because uh, I've been traveling that same route. And not that he knows that. I uh, wouldn't be much good at my job if he did. Interesting thing about Mr. Schuyler's travels, though, every place he's been, New Orleans, Cheyenne, Santa Fe, San Antonio, they've had a flock of these. Well, what about it? Well, it looks so good, it'd take an expert to tell it wouldn't. You better start traveling a different route, Mr. Monroe. Mr. Barkley. You're trailing the wrong man. Mr. Barkley, I got my family back east. Little place in Virginia. It's been over a, a 12th month since I've seen them. I don't like it. But when I believe I'm right about a man, I'll stay with him until I catch him. Mr. Monroe, I've heard your suspicions. Now, suppose you give me your evidence. I don't have any. Mr. Monroe, Brett Schuyler and I went through law school together. We roomed together, ate together, boned from the same books together. I know him as well as I know myself. Well, now, it's been quite a while since you've seen him. Now, what is it he's been doing, did he tell you? He did. Land, cattle, shipping. Oh. I never heard that he signed a deed, or looked at a herd, or boarded a ship. But if you are confident he is not my man, then you won't mind helping me. And just what is it you'd like me to do? Well, now, Skyler knows he's safe here as your guest. You, uh, 
should have easy access to his belongings. There's a good possibility he's got that money concealed in his bag. I'll show yeah, you. I know, I know. It's a Judas trick. Call it what you like. But I wouldn't ask this of a man's best friend if I didn't think it was necessary. I'm staying at the hotel in Stockton. Yes. Oh, Mr. Barkley. Well, you're just in time for a bite of lunch. Come on in, come on in. Here, pull up a chair. I'll send down for another portion. No, thanks. Hi. Yeah? Winnie. Take a look at these. In a border design, they usually come a cropper. Of course, uh, some are fancier than others. The genuine engraver, he don't mind how much time he puts in designing that lacy border there. Of course, the uh, counterfeit is uh, inclined to get a bit more impatient. He wants to get his hands on some real money. Especially when most folk can't tell the difference between the counterfeit and the real thing. And the fact that most banks print their own money. You find a flaw? No. Nothing counterfeit about these. These are all genuine. Give me a glass. Well, now. He's smarter than I thought. Or well, maybe you're just a little too eager to find a suspect, Nero. Now, with all due respect to the Secret Service, I'd appreciate it if you'd take you and your suspicions right out of this valley. Mr. Barkley, I still feel I'm right about your friend. I'm gonna stay with him till I get... Boy, I 
think we're just a little bit early for the ladies. What do you say we step into my office over there and I'll buy you a drink? Fine. Kind of like old times, isn't it, Brett? Mm-hmm. Remember that jug we used to keep hidden at school? Yeah. Well, the whiskey has gone over the table since then. It sure has. Yes, sir, we got a lot of years to catch up on, you and me. So, let's hear from my well-traveled friend. Thank you. I want an autobiographical report. Oh, I wouldn't know where to begin. Well, how about the Seven Seas, those ships of yours? Where did they sail? East Indies? Among other places. <laughs> Modern Marco Polo, huh? Or maybe I should say Richard Dana, two years before the mast. You know, he didn't follow his law career either, or get rich on his ships. But you? Well, yes. I did pretty well. <laughs> you know, I can see you now with a spyglass up to your eye, watching your ships come in, bulging with riches <laughs> from the Orient. What were their names? Oh, they were just chartered, Jared. The Lotus, the Condor. Clipper ships? Steam. Oh, sure. They're faster, more profit, huh? Then what? You just traded it all for land and cattle, huh? One or the other, I, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, come on, boy. Jog your memory. The land first, I think. When? What year? What is this, Jared? A cross-examination? <laughs> well, I, I guess it kind of sounds like that, doesn't it? Say, I have some money I want to deposit in town. I'll introduce you at the bank in the morning. Fine. It's better than keeping it in the false bottom of my valise. You know, Brett, you decide to practice law here. You won't be starting from scratch, I promise you that. As a matter of fact, I'd be glad to have you come in with me. Oh, Jared. Now you think about it. I will. And there you are, Mr. Schuyler. Receipt for 20000 Proud to have you as a valued customer of the bank. Roy! Mr. Schuyler is a new customer of ours, Roy. Good friend of uh, Mr. Barclays. Yes, sir. Well, many thanks, Luther. Anything you do for Mr. Schuyler will be the same as if you're doing it for me. Always a pleasure. See you at home this evening. Right. Thank you, Jared. Roy will be finished with the count in a minute. I'll be transferring more of my money to Stockton and do most of my business through you, if you have the facilities. The valley's grown a lot since the Barclays settled here, and this bank's had to grow to keep up with it. Let me show you around. There's no branch of banking that we can't handle, Mr. Schuyler. Trust funds, loans, letters of credit, international currency exchange, expert valuations on produce, livestock, and the reserve in here for all contingencies. Mm -hmm. Money couldn't be safer if it was in the San Francisco Mint. People in the Valley like to know that. Big or small, they've learned to depend on this bank, never to lose a penny of their money. Say, this is high carbon steel. Well, now, there's not many who knows the difference between that and the old ferro-manganese variety. Well, I own a couple of shares in a foundry that make them. I'm not sure it'll stop a safe cracker completely, though. Well, maybe not all by itself. Anyone tries to break into that vault will get the shock of his life. An electric alarm system, huh? How did you know? I noticed your alarm bell out front. You're a very observant man. Thank you. Mr. Kirby, if I had any doubts about your bank's facilities up to now, I certainly don't have them anymore. You're beginning to sound like one of us already. And as a close friend of Jared's, I want you to come and see me personally anytime you have a banking problem. Yes, sir, I will. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, I'd like to make a small withdrawal on my deposit. Thank you. It's for uh, $200. How would you like it, sir? A couple of fifties, the rest in tens and twenties, please. There you are. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schuyler.
My friend. What have you got to report? Success? Yes. Front door locks a heaves Rodney type 34A. I can handle that easy. What about the vault, Brett? Ordinary combination lock. Nothing for me, Brett? Ah, very pretty. Uh, but lucky for us, not very original. Yes. Uh, your banker is a thrifty man. Uh, he prints his bills from a stereotype. That's much cheaper than having a new design made up. He prefers to spend his money on the vault. An electric alarm system. Oh? It could be difficult. Well, between you and Ketchy, uh, there won't be any problem for you. Between Ketchy and you, you'll have to count me out. I'm sorry, I've done all I intend to do. <laughs> this is the most ambitious plan we've ever had. And it's only workable if we carry it off as a team, of which you are an indispensable part. I didn't expect to feel this way. I can't do this to Jared Barkley, Clyde. Brad, my friend, we're not doing anything to him. We're doing it to the bank. We're doing it to him. This thing could wreck his whole life. How? The people that keep the money in that bank are his friends. They built this valley together. They trust him the way he trusts me. Sure he trusts you. That's why you're here. I can't do it, Clyde. Jared's the closest friend I've ever had. I can't destroy him. Oh. You hear that, Ketchy? This fine young gentleman who unloaded an assortment of handsomely engraved mining stock on the cream of Philadelphia society has suddenly got himself all worked up over a, a friendship. He offered to take me into the law firm. To do what? To run his courthouse errands for him? To be a glorified clerk? Oh, that's all the use he'd have for an inexperienced law school student. Jared wouldn't treat me that way. That's how men like him get rich. Now, they didn't get theirs by giving anything away. No, it's the one who snarls and snaps the hardest is the one who gets to the top. And that's how the Barclays got where they are. And that's why that friend of yours offered you a job, so he could squeeze all the talent out of you with no cost to himself. Oh, uh, you can start inking that press, Ketchy. Won't take me too long to cut these plates. Now everything is going to go as scheduled. We'll take the bank tonight. Oh, and uh, you better stay. You might learn something about the art of engraving. I'll be back. You're not still worried about your friend, are you, Brett? Now, we're the only real friends he's got, Ketchy. He knows that. Beautiful. Mm, thank you. I'm glad you like it. I wasn't sure. Well, if she didn't like it, I would. By the way, Brett, have you given any more thought to my offer? Yes, I have, Jared. I've given it a great deal of thought. And I'm not quite sure I understand what it meant. Well, I, uh, I guess it means you'd be coming in as my assistant. Would certainly give you the experience you need. Searching out precedents, writing first drafts of some of your briefs, that sort of thing? <laughs> yes, I'm afraid that's what it would mean while you worked on the more important cases? At first, yes. That's fair enough, isn't it? Yes, it's more than fair, Jared. Pardon us for talking business at the table. And excuse me, I, uh, I have an appointment in town. Don't bother waiting up for me. Aha, uh -huh. well, in that case, you are excused. Good night. Good night, Brett. Well, you didn't exactly keel over with your offer, now did he, Jerry? Maybe he didn't think it was good enough.
behind the counter. Your coffee's cold. I'll get you some more. No, 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 thanks. What is it, Jerry? All right. Well, it's... It's Brett. There was someone here to see me the day after he arrived. A Secret Service agent. He accused Brett of being involved in a counterfeit ring. Brett? Oh, no, I, I can't believe that. <laughs> I might as well believe it of myself. He didn't have any proof, but he... he asked me to help him. I did. I didn't find a thing. Not a single word, a deed, a scrap of paper that would make me doubt he was any different than he's always been. And yet I think I doubted him in spite of myself. I know. When somebody puts something like that into your mind, it, it's hard to root it out. It, uh, it just stays there. That's exactly how it's been. You know, when he first got here, I'd have done anything in the world to help him. And then after that man spoke to me, I got less and less sure of him and myself. And now? Do you trust him now? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't at dinner. I think it showed. I think that's why he left so suddenly. Well, I'm sure you'll find the answer in the morning. Good night, darling. Good night, Mother. Seven left. Nine 
I'm right. Repeat the last two numbers. Nine right. Three left. Seven right. Good morning. Good morning, Brett. You want breakfast, you better grab a chair. Thank you. I've got something to say. Before you do, Brett, there's something I'd like to say. That offer of mine to take you into the office, it's withdrawn. Instead, I'm offering you a full partnership. Now, not that you're going to be any bargain for the first year, but knowing what you're capable of, I'd be wrong to offer you anything less. I want you in with me, Brett, on equal terms. The sooner, the better. Brett, it's not like Jared has given something away. He spent an awful long time looking for just the right man. It's wonderful to fulfill something I know you both have always wanted. Well, now that that's settled, what was it you wanted to say? I hate to say this now. I'm leaving for Denver on the noon train. I'm sorry, it's... Just something I have to do. And I uh, have a business meeting at the hotel in town, so I'll have breakfast there. I'm all packed, so uh, I know it's very sudden. Will you be coming back, Brett? I don't know. You'll, uh, you need a buggy. If you do, my offer still stands. Goodbye, man. Goodbye. 
Goodbye, Brent. I'm sorry, Jared. So am I, Brett. But it's your decision to make. Found this on the table in Mrs. Scholar's room. I guess he forgot it. Thanks, Silas. to say your goodbyes. Uh, catch your ride to Rio Vista. Take a riverboat from there, and I'll get the stage at Manteca, and we'll all meet at Salt Lake day after tomorrow. So we might as well share this all right now. There's not going to be any sharing, Clyde. Well, what do you mean? I'm taking the money back. You're taking it back? We should never have gotten into this. It was a mistake right from the start. Oh, this is surely not the time to start. I'm worrying taking about the money now. back, and I mean it. serious about going back in that bank with that money? You're mad, Brett, putting stolen money back in the bank. Such a fool notion. I almost hope you get away with it. I said almost. Morning, Ira. Jared. Say, does a Mr. Schuyler have a reservation on the noon train? He did have, I believe. Yeah, here it is, but he changed it. He's booked on the midnight now. When did he change it? About an hour ago, I guess. Checked his bags and rode out someplace. Thanks, Ira. Oh, Mr. Barkley. Well, Monroe, I thought you'd left town. Oh, nothing I'd like better. Only it don't fit in with my job. I hear your friend deposited quite a bit of money across the street the other day. That's right. All he had in his valise, I guess. I imagine the bank would let you examine it. Oh, I did. I did. And it's good money. And that's a puzzler. Now, the regular method would be for the counterfeiter to deposit some uh, bad paper and then start making withdrawals of the bank's good money. But I guess Mr. Schuyler's got a smarter scheme up his sleeve. Of course, now there's uh, nothing much I can do about it till that uh, counterfeit starts circulating around town here. But uh, whatever he's up to, I got a feeling that bank's gonna be part of it. Skyler been in today. Not far as I know. Well, I thought he might have come in to make a withdrawal. Let me check. No, no sir. He hasn't been here today. His account's just the way it was. No more deposits, no withdrawals. Except for a couple of hundred he withdrew the day that you brought him in. 
But I'm still expecting to do a lot of business with Mr. Schuyler, thanks to you. Told me he was transferring more of his funds here, making his headquarters here in town. Yes, well, I, uh, I wouldn't count on that, Luther. He's leaving town today. He might not be back. Well, no. That's too bad. He, uh, he impressed me as a bright young man, very intelligent about banking. He's the first man I've had in here who knew exactly what kind of steel that vault door is made of. Even knew about our electric alarm system. Anything wrong, Jared? Hmm? Oh, uh, no, Luther, nothing. Hold it right there, Brett. Forgot this.
Funny. First time I've ever been without it. Hand over your gun. Jared, let me explain. There's nothing to explain. Hand over your gun. Get up your hands, both of you. Uh, get their guns, Ketchy, and the money. Uh, we got here just in time. This wouldn't be your friend Barclay, would it? And uh, tie them up, Ketchy. Get your hands behind your back. What's happening here, Jared? Who's that? The third member of the gang, Sheriff. I've heard some tall stories before in my time, but this one beats them all. I've been trying to figure out what made him think we could possibly swallow a lie as tall as that. It happens to be true. That money Mr. Barkley saw Skyler take out of the vault was counterfeit. Looks like, in a way, we uh, were both right about the man, huh? Sheriff, we'll talk about disposition in a moment. Fred, I'd, uh, I'd like to have a word with Mr. Schuyler. Well, go ahead, Jared. We'll wait outside. You're gonna need a lawyer. Would you trust me to do the job? Why should you? As your friend. I was hoping you'd say that. 